seven and two in their last nine games. LA is also the only NBA team to be an undefeated four and zero in group play. Also number one in fourth quarter defensive rating. With the game on the line, Max Christie locked down D. Mitch on consecutive possessions. Christie's helped balance out LA's core around Braun and AD with youthfulness, showing us the Lakers aren't done just yet. Keep watching for a film room breakdown on Christie's late game defense and a whole lot more that you can't miss on The Lake Show. But just 9.9% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you're a Hoop fan, make sure you subscribe. Sometimes we forget how special the number one overall pick out of Kentucky back in 2012 really is. The well-rounded Brow posted a monster season-high 32 points on 13 for 20 shooting to go along with 13 rebounds, 3 blocks, and 2 steals. Whether it was pulling off Whirling Dervish face-up attacks, Dance. Spin. AD score. AD. or finishing his scraps with dunker spot execution, Anthony Davis's seamless standing jump and finesse carried LA, especially in the second half. 23 of AD's 32 came in the final 24 minutes, but it was actually how Anthony beasted on the backboards that took LA over the top. Ranked number 8 in the association in total offensive rebounds, directly ahead of rivaled fellow center Nikola Jokic, the Brow added 5 of those O boards in Cleveland, tied with Jarrett Allen for a game high. Drivers in this case, Torian Prince, can feel comfortable throwing up just about anything when Anthony is able to get in the paint at will with speedy rolls, top-notch muscle to take up space, and watch the standing jump wingspan plus hands to spring up then extend over Mobley to finish the putback. For Braun, Right off the tip in his return to Cleveland, he'd collect the Torian bounce and carve through Cleveland's Giants with a Euro step and left-handed finish for the and one. Given it was LeBron's first time playing in Cleveland since breaking the record, it was classy for the Cavs organization to show respect to the man who returned home to lead them to a 2016 title with a tribute bid. While the homecoming for James did see him have a rare off night shooting the rock, he nonetheless stuffed the stat sheet with 22-6-6-2-2. With the schedule allowing James to stay in Cleveland another day, a drive over to Akron consisted of a visit to all of his I Promise School, House 33 Community Center, and La Museum. For many different reasons, 20 of which displayed in this screenshot right here, it's getting increasingly difficult by the day for even the harshest of skeptics to not label James as the greatest to ever lace him up. Regardless of if you can say he tops Michael Jordan, it's worth appreciating in any way you can how once in a lifetime rare it is for any athlete to be one of the best in their sport after two decades of vicious mileage. Very few of us can relate to Braun's day in day out dedication to his craft and will to still be the best after after all these years. LA's most valued player while posting career highs despite it being year 21 in both field goal and three point percentage, James miraculously remains one of the top players on the planet in 23-24. Meanwhile, before he was forced to miss time with a thigh injury, with Cam Reddish having proved himself as a capable two-way option, earning 24 minutes per night over 15 games in which he posted a Laker third best, only behind AD and Braun, 109.3 defensive rating, then taking in how Max Christie's filled in for Reddish in the starting lineup, seemingly having vamped his defensive precision as a sophomore, and even missing a top lockdown stopper like Jared Vando Vanderbilt's LA's defense on the wing is already loaded. Shifting to the second unit, where in nine games since sacrificing his starting spot, Austin Reeves has put up a stellar 64% true shooting mark, while also being on pace to post the most assists per game off the bench since John Stockton in 1987. So massive credit to Reeves for swiftly adjusting to this new role. You see a lot of players get caught up in themselves after securing an extension, but with how Reeves has bought into Darvin Ham's system, he seems to be refreshingly selfless, which is a good sign for LA's continued success. Reeves would place two picture-perfect lobs to Jackson Hayes in the first half, two of LA's 34 dimes on the night. The bench as a whole produced 38 points on 70% shooting, as the backup front court of Christian Wood and Jackson Hayes was overwhelming for Cleveland's backup bigs to stay with athletically, giving LA an extra 23 points. 
securing his fourth career start and second consecutive in the absence of Reddish was Max Christie, who continues to fit in well with the first five, given his ability to move without the ball really well. Most notably with Mad Max, it's the reactivity, range, reach, lower body swiftness, and sound legal guarding position defensively that stands out. 30 seconds left and up two, sees Christie tap dance, press up with his lead foot, then swiftly shuffle right to stick with the D Mitch in and out plus momentum, reach in to no avail, but stay on balance while starting a diagonal backtrack to block the drive, with Mitchell instead pulling up. It's a late contest, but his initial positioning kept him in the vicinity, which is enough to result in a D-Mitch brick. After crunch time, AR knocked down a pair at the stripe, taking the recovery from Max after getting crossed. His strides and general ground coverage allow him to shuffle back as opposed to having to sprint. One hand extended back position into legal two hands up positioning forced Mitchell into a slight push off, and Christie times up his contest better than Donovan times up his release before a monster rebound from Reeves. As noted by Twitter user at Lakers Cook, the abilities that Christie brings to the table are not teachable, as defense is 99% effort driven, which either a player is individually driven to bring to the table or isn't. There's only so much a coach can say or do to get a player to lay it all out there like Christie does. In addition to the rare determination, another reason Max's clamps are unteachable is the man's precise footwork, balance, and stick to itiveness to relentlessly attempt to make an effort on any given defended shot. Speaking to the selflessness of Austin Reeves, despite Christie replacing Reddish when it could have been him, post-game he would state regarding Max, whenever he has the opportunity to make an input on the game, he does. He's a professional, a good kid, works really hard. Meanwhile, the game after his first start, Coach Ham would give a mix of praise and criticism to Christie, first referring to him as a bright young player that'll be a part of the Lakers for a long time, before giving him tips about navigating around picks. Speaking of tips, while the refs are doing a better job at letting players be more physical this season and basing their calls off positioning and not player reaction, for the most part, hopefully officials can stop whistling technical fouls like the one on LeBron for hanging on the rim, but get him back on track. And since Christie was a second round pick, who's showing that he was probably a draft steal in 2022, I want to know in your opinion, what's the ceiling for Max? Best answer down below in the comments section earns next video's commenter shout out, and the top 5 commenters by the end of the year earn free NBA merch of their choosing, so make sure to leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Shout out to Ricky TV, who says, I really think Jamal Mosley has to be given a lot of credit for Orlando. He gave this team a true identity with how they play defense and with scrappy determination. Great take right there. Appreciate every answer. Thank you for any bit of support. D-Flow signing off.